Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our bi-weekly RDA Tech Q&A. It is the first one of 2016. As we were saying, 2016 just doesn't feel very... No, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really feel like anything of a year. Yeah, 2015 sort of feels... It, it sort of had a little weight to it. And oh my god, if 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 that joke, that fucking joke, everyone was like... Everyone's, it's 2015. Everyone's asked me what, I, what I'm going to be doing in five years. I don't have 2020 vision. I want, I just, no one would stop using it. Now it's going away and I'm so happy. Fuck that joke. Joke was awful. Oh, it took me a second. Okay. I didn't get that one right away. <laughs> well, don't worry. If you were anywhere near Tumblr, they were pounding it into your fucking skull. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, we are here. Um, I am Nash. I do RDA. I also have a 10 plus years tech background doing this sort of nonsense. With me, as always, producer Mike Gearman also has a Hello. significant background of tech. People say at least all the Back to the Future stuff is done. I like the Back to the Future stuff. Like yeah, that. but now we're going to have people getting the date wrong. Although that is... Past. That we we are uh, that does lead into our first story. We're going to be answering um, your uh, tech questions tonight, as we are want to do. If you have something you'd like us to uh, maybe help you with, send it to requests at radiodeadair.com. We'll endeavor to answer that question. Put tech Q and A in the subject line. But yeah, the the Back to the Future thing leads into our first news story. Probably one of the most hilarious headlines just uh, just i love this one from ours um how to succeed with hoverboards without catching on fire yeah but they're not the back to the future hoverboards they're I, those little wheelie things i know they're every, segways without handles yeah every, everyone's calling these things hoverboards they're not hoverboards but these became something of an epidemic in 2015 if, if that's a good way of phrasing it. These these became, these damn things were everywhere. What they are, oh, I love, if you look real close, you can see the, the name on this one is The Swag Way. Ugh. <laughs> it, just, it just hurts on a visceral level. It's like, ugh. What these things are, you've probably seen them, are, yeah, they're self-balancing, gyroscopic look, sort of, of, conveyances, I guess is the best term, um, that that were dubbed hoverboards, yet they do not hover. They are barely boards. I find, I, I find fault with your logic. However, the, the, the big issue with these is, um, and, and lots of people bought them, they got so popular that Chinese companies were... were putting them out so quickly that some of the safety standards may have been a little lax. Oh, the safety standards weren't lax as they're putting crap components in them. Well, that kind of counts as safety standards, Mike. That's kind of part of, that's part of safety. That That's kind of, that's kind of important. Yeah, the, um... But where is my thing? Where is my thing? There is my thing. I'm having some technical issues. Let me move that up a bit. That that how's that? Yeah, I sound better. I always <laughs> I sound better. Okay. Um. Yeah. The, the issue with these was the batteries being put in them were crap. Crap. Yes. Yeah. Um. Well, from what I heard, it wasn't. It wasn't just. If it was the name brand Segway without a stick model, mm. then it was a good battery. But if it was the off brand, oh, we've made it for two hundred dollars. We're selling it for two hundred dollars cheaper. Buy this one instead. Those are the ones with the bad batteries. Yeah, in order to make these things powerful enough to last for hours and hours of use, they had to put large rechargeable lithium-ion batteries in them. Now, lithium-ion batteries 
we they're in everything these days. They're in your phone. They're in your laptop. They are a common component. And just my Bluetooth speaker has a lithium ion battery in it. They're they're a common component of modern electronics. But one thing they don't like is constant impacts and heat. No, they do not. These two sorts of components happen to occur, these two elements occur quite often when you're riding it around as a motor conveyance. So what was happening was these things were getting knocked around, they were getting used so much that the battery heated up, and kaboom! Or fire. Or fire, which is kaboom! Honestly, interestingly enough, the same thing was happening with the Boeing jets. Remember the 787, the Dreamliner? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were using substandard lithium-ion batteries, catching fire. Um, so I just, I love the fact that they had to, how to succeed in hoverboards without catching on fire. Oh, if you received one of these for Christmas or whatnot, it, it, it's mainly the race to the bottom is the big problem um anything below say I, i'm going to, to to go on a limb here anything below five hundred dollars if you spent for one of these you're probably getting something that was slapped together as fast as possible to get it out on the market and a lot of these come from amazon and amazon imports a lot of stuff from china and from overseas manufacturers and they were just running really quick to get those on the market they weren't really concerned too much with you know not exploding oh that was bad my screen was went bad. away my screen went away now it's back okay um and i know lots of people got these for christmas lots of people you know it, it was it was a big deal for them so you may want to check on if your uncle or your aunt or your grandma sent sent your kids or sent you one of these these hoverboards. You may want to do a little online research to find out if there's a fire issue. Did you see the brand name on the second one in there? What? Funky Duck. Funky Duck. The Funky Duck. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? The funky duck. What is, what are you? No, sir, Mr. Funky Duck. No, sir. Wasn't that a song from the 70s? That was Disco Duck. Honestly, what's, what is really interesting about this to me is that we are aware, since, since lithium ion batteries are so much a part of everything we use every day, we don't really pay attention to the fact that misuse of them means you have a dangerous object. And your your phone could quite easily, if if it gets too hot of an impact, if it gets to, if it overheats, they can overheat. Oh yeah, my old phone used to overheat all the time. There is a fire hazard involved there, and we're just not aware of that because the technology is just everywhere. Well, it doesn't happen often enough to people to go. Oh, I should do something about this. Although there, Dell had that issue for a while with those laptops that were just spontaneously combusting because of crappy lithium-ion batteries. There, there are some things you can cheap out on, but you really don't want to with this if you're at all interested in the hoverboard thing. So I thought we'd, we'd talk about that briefly. Another really popular... Uh, oh, speaking of hoverboards, I don't know if you saw this. It's just... Uh. Yeah, tangentially in the same thing. Uh, there was a video. Mike Tyson got one of those hoverboard things. And fell down. Yes. Uh, and people have remixed it, or video edited it, so that it's got the Mike Tyson punch-out guy punching him out as he falls down. Hilarious. Let, let, let me see. I, I believe the... Uh... Where is it? Some of the kids are too young to remember Mike Tyson's punch out. 
some of the kids are too young to remember, you know. Mike did. Tyson yeah. is anything other than the guy from a hangout hangover movie. <laughs> that guy in the hangover movie, he's awesome. I liked him. <laughs> yeah, I believe the uh, this is the vine you're referring to. There he goes. That was one of those little perfect confluences in life. That's just, just beautiful. Just beautiful. There, there, there he goes. I want to see it one more time. Oh, okay. Uh, another popular Christmassy type thing that is uh, been going on for a few years is drones. And we've talked on the show before about how drones are becoming an issue. They're going into restricted airspace. They're flying around where they're trying to put out fires. They're falling out of the sky and hitting babies in the face. Um, All of these things have happened. Yeah, what? All of these things have happened. All of these things have happened. Drone hit a baby! Um, well, one drone manufacturer, DJI, who I believe they make the Phantom, they're, they're one of the more popular ones, has come up with a solution for this. Now, they already want to... The FAA already wants uh, people to start getting their drones registered, like a license plate on them, so we can trace them back if you do something stupid. DJI is, is applying a software uh, change to their drones to maybe get the FAA off their back just ever so slightly. They're going to be applying geofencing to the drones, which I think is actually a good initiative. Um... What this will do is, using the GPS that's built into the drone, it will prevent the drone from flying into restricted airspace. It'll be on board the drone. It won't be able to go anywhere. If it's listed at the FAA as a restricted airspace, the drone will not go there. Even if you tell it, go over there. No. But I want you to go over there. No. I want you to get in the way of that plane. No. Which, you know, I I do uh, like that we've invented invisible walls, Will Junior says. It works for dogs and cats. You can get the invisible wall things for this. You just gotta train your drone. You just can't use, you know, treats and a stick. Um I do I do like that the company is taking the initiative on this, especially considering there have been so many problems with these things. Having a company actually step up and go, whoa, um, maybe we should do something about this. That is laudable on their part. Um, now, th they can temporarily opt out of it, but the company needs to have a verified ac uh, um, account with a credit card, debit card, and cell phone on file. That way, the only way, yeah, if you want to be able to fly anywhere you want, sure, you can opt out of it, but we have to have a complete record of who you are and where you are and, you know, some way to get back money from you if you crash into something, then you can fly wherever the fuck you want. That's great. I like this. Now, people have mentioned it, is, it will be possible to hack into it. Potentially. Oh, I say almost certainly. Sir, it's it's potentially. Um, but at least this is a start, and at least this is something that... pro. I like seeing companies be proactive about issues like this. So. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice touch. However, they can't turn off flight restrictions all over the place. Washington, D.C. is it's completely off limits. So that even if you give them your credit card and your cell phone and whatnot, you, you are not buzzing the White House again. But what I see it saying is, it says, from taking off in restricted areas. So if you're outside a restricted area, you can take off there and say, okay, back up, get to speed, fly like hell in there. Maybe it shuts off once it answers. I don't know. Which oh great, great. Now we've oh great. We got we've invented dive bombers. Uh Bonsai! No, Mike, no. 
No, no, I wasn't going there. I wasn't going there. I do, but it, it is. Well, it, they don't have little. I mean, you can put little gummy bears in there as pilots. Not one of those big one-pound gummy bears. You, I don't think you get any of those to take off with that. I, I do appreciate that that the companies. It, this is acknowledging there is a problem, and I like that the manufacturers are not acknowledging that this is an issue and needs to be dealt with. But I'm pretty sure that re the registration is not going to go away, though. I don't think the FC F FAA is going to be. They're going to like this. It's going to make things easier on the FAA, but they're still going to register them. And there is a deadline on the. Uh, you are red. Uh, February twenty ninth. February. Well, oh no, it says February nineteenth in this article. Okay, nineteenth maybe. Um, if you're caught flying a drone, uh, and this is any drone under fifty five pounds, if you're caught flying one. Without registration, you'll face fines of up to $27,000. Although there are some uh, senators, representatives saying, uh, we don't think the FAA has the authority to do this. There are some yeah. senators who don't think any government agency has any authority whatsoever. Sure. We call them the Tea Party. They're, they're not really the best people to ask about that stuff. <laughs> Well, do you remember last Christmas I gave Vaguely. you my heart the very next day? No. Um, yeah. Well, I, thought, I thought this was going to be a start about the song, and I'm like, oh, yeah. But no, I, I said song. last Christmas, and the song stopped in my head, and we just went for it. Okay. okay. No, last Christmas, um, lots of people got their brand new Xboxes and their PS4s, and they were all excited to play about it, and they hopped online only to find out that a hacker group was DDoSing the servers, both Microsoft and Sony, to keep those units from going online. Kind of because they're assholes. Yeah. This year, it was PC owners' turn. And I, I really want to stress this because a lot of people really misunderstood this story when it happened. Um, Steam. Had a wee bit of an issue on Christmas Day. DDoS-induced caching problem led to Christmas Day Steam data links. Okay. What started happening on Christmas was a lot of people were logging into their Steam accounts and they were noticing a weird thing. When they went to look at their account information, it was popping up as some random person's account information it wasn't their account information. Yeah. And everyone was going, oh, what did Valve do? Valve goofed up. Valve made a, a stupid little mistake. And now, well, yes and no. See, here's what happened. Um, Valve was hit with a DDoS attack. And for those of you who are tech, not the tech, most tech savvy people, a DDoS attack stands for Distributed Denial of Service. It's when tons and tons of internet connected devices start pinging an address for information. Just saying, hey, hey, are you there? Are you there? And the computer has- Kind of like that floaty thing in the Link game. Say what? The floaty thing in the Link game. Um, Legend of Zelda game. Hey, listen, listen, hey! That's the one. That's the one. Um, That's a DDoS. Imagine a thousand of those around Link. That's a DDoS. Navi, yeah, it's not, and, and and Link's brain implodes. Um, what these, what this is intended to do is make the server unreachable. It's it's handling so much traffic that it can't react. But this is the 21st century, and we've started to adapt to DDoS attacks. It's Valve's host. Uh, the uh, there was a uh, denial of service attack pushed the load to 20 times normal. To handle the attack, Valve's web's caching par partner uh, rolled out a configuration. Uh, they updated the configuration to try to route around it. However, it kind of goofed. 
And the authentication pages got screwed up because they were trying to deal with all this incoming traffic. And that's why you were seeing someone else's account. It was sending back your data. It was sending your data to Steve. And Steve's data to Bob. And Bob's data to Phil. Yeah. Phil's data to Janice and so on. Yeah, it was it was sharing the, the data with people who it was not supposed to share und data with. So this this is not necessarily it wasn't in top oh, my screen stop going away. I need you to stay up there. I need you to stay up there. There you go. Um this wasn't entirely Valve's fault. Cause they were DDoSed and it did result the Steam store went down for a while and they fixed the cache and normal operation operation reserved resumed. No um no private data, at least well, in terms of financial data, was leaked because you couldn't just go in and see their shit. Um but yeah, there was no data sufficient for fraudulent transactions. Should still change your passwords. Should probably still, yeah, probably should change your passwords. But this was not exactly Valve's fault. They did try to mitigate it. However, Valve has not come out and actually said, we're sorry this happened. I'm not really sure, you know, in these days, I'm not sure how much of an apology makes a damn bit of a difference, but... In the PR world, it probably makes a lot. The result on this, though, was everybody lost their entire mind over this. Yes, Every of course, because it's after Christmas and they can't play their games. And if they can't play their games, that means they've got to do that most horrible thing of ever on uh, of Christmas. Go Deal outside? What? Deal with their families. Deal with their families, yeah. Uh... Uh... Racist grandma. Racist <laughs> grandma. Now it, it 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 everyone instantly assumed they said they thought this was Valve's fault coming from it. And 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 I was sitting there reading this like, really? You think someone is at the Valve offices on Christmas Day? And just decided, hey, you know what? I haven't played with the caching files in a while. Let me just reconfigure those on the fly on Christmas Day. I'm sure that'll be fine. Yeah, that does. Uh, no, no, they. Yeah. I could see someone at IBM doing that, but not. <laughs> at <laughs> yeah, I can see there's, no, there's nobody here. I can get all this shit done today. Yeah. Why is my... Oh, my mic just keeps dropping down and down and going quieter and quieter, and I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Oh, you just got real loud there. I did? Yeah. Well, not really, really loud, but definitely a, definitely more notice, noticeable. All right. Well, hopefully this... this I'm adjusting my... My levels are being stupid tonight. Why are you... Don't, you, you, don't, you don't have something in check that says auto-adjust, do you? No. I don't think so. I shouldn't. Okay. I better not. Skype, did you change my settings? I know they pushed out an update very recently. You changed my settings, Skype. How's that? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. You changed my damn... <laughs> 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 uh... <laughs> Technical glitches, everybody. Lovely shit. All right. It still says I got a missed call from you. Fucking Skype. So that that covers uh, the the news. There wasn't a whole lot happening news wise around um, the holidays. Well, not tech wise. Not tech wise. So, but we do have your questions. And again, if you have tech questions for us, send them to requests at radiodeadair.com. Put tech Q&A in the subject line. We'll attempt to answer those for you. But we got a bunch already. Let's yep. let's see what we have to work with to start. Okay. One we've covered a few times already, but I might as we might as well answer this one again because everyone keeps asking. 
In the past, you mentioned your dislike of D-Link routers. This comes from Renee. Uh, what router would you currently recommend for gaming and streaming video? I'm currently using a D-Link wireless and gigabit router. Okay. Wireless, I think Nash said this before, I know you concur. Wireless, if you're doing uh, streaming video, well, watching streaming video, wireless is fine. Producing streaming video, you probably want to go wired. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, that's always never never use wireless for streaming stuff if you can absolutely production. Help. Yeah, if you're if you're making it, don't use wireless because wireless is fairly reliable these days. But we do have to deal with the issues of the ups and the downs, and sometimes there's a little bit of interference, and a little interference when you're just browsing the web or even watching a video that's been that's got a cache going and it's buffered, you won't notice it. But when you're sending the data in a constant upload stream, it's noticeable. Yeah, a wireless there. hiccup will cause flappiness. That's a technical term. It will cause flappiness in your stream. It's like those little birds. Yes. Flappy birds? Flappy birds. Um, so don't... I know you don't like having to use wireless, but it's not reliable. You really should get a wired connection. And if you're across the house from the router, your best bet is always going to be a really long cable. Like <laughs> it or not. I'm sorry, I hate saying that's just the state of how wireless works these days. Properly shielded, get some of those little trip anti-trip things. If you're going to run them past doorways, otherwise, honestly, run them over the tops of doorways. Yeah, that's what I do. People can't trip on them. They can't, can't accidentally chew on it. Yeah, I have little sticky uh, wire, uh, wire hoops with like zip ties on them. And they and use like blue tech stuff, right? Yep. And they just stick to the wall and I run it. All the way upstairs, along the yeah. ceiling. Yeah. You can't accidentally vacuum and damage the cable. Yep. Let's say pets and toddlers won't get involved. So uh, wireless is not a... But if you absolutely cannot avoid it, uh, Asus. Asus routers are the, the, the ones starting at about $100 and up. That's what you want to go with. Don't cheat yeah. out on your router. Don't go to Walmart and get the $30 router and think everything's going to be fine. You've got to invest in this stuff if you want it to work properly. The cheap Unless one. someone has gone through and relabeled and it's the $100 plus Asus router that if someone has mislabeled, it's $30. Get that one. But otherwise, no. No. Um, yeah, even, even an Asus, I like using the AC routers, which is the new, uh, iteration of 8010.11 wireless. Cause I do use wireless, my laptop and my phone and whatnot. Um, but even Asus's N routers, which is the one step down, it's still so much better than one of those $30 little D-Link crappy things. Don't, don't get one of the little, you get what you pay. You seriously get what you pay for. So. All right. Next one is an interesting kind of question from Ben. It's how about a demonstration of how to use alternate DNS servers like Google or OpenDNS? Well, this is not very difficult at all. Um, it takes me... about two minutes. Yeah, this is actually all right. A DNS server is essentially a phone book for the Internet. It's when you type in, well, Dash brings this up, I'll explain. When you type in things like uh, slash dot dot com or cnn dot com or whatever uh, slash dot org actually I think but um whatever Gmail your computer doesn't really know what that means no but it knows who to ask and so it goes to your DNS server and says who is this and it gets back an address which is going to be your standard IP address mm -hmm. uh, you know which it, I don't even know what CNN is these days but. <laughs> It resolves it and says, this name resolves to this number or this series of numbers you can try. Yeah. Uh, because some, some, someone big like CNN might have a couple, you know, one primary and a fallback and whatever, where they got load balancing internally, really. But so. Yeah, all the all those addresses online, Google.com, 
ArsTechnica.com, all of those, those don't really actually connect directly to a website. Those are just masks for the real, which is a, a these days we're still using IPv4. We should be using IPv6 now, but we're using IPv4 addresses. It's a series of four numbers, number dot number dot number dot, dot number. number. <laughs> I had to count. You lost count, didn't you? Yeah, I lost count. Um, and that's and, and the reason for this, of course, is because it is much easier for us to remember CNN.com than it is four numbers that are ranged from one from zero to uh, two fifty five. Yeah, it's easier. So the DNS server steps in and says, "I'll keep track of what number goes to what name," and any it tells your computer. Anytime you need to know, just ask me. Now, why would you want a different DNS server? Well, some of them are faster. Uh, Google's DNS is amazing, very fast. Very fast. So it means the difference between the time when you hit enter on Google.com and the DNS server case. Oh, it, it goes to this number. Go here. It it reduces the time the computer has to the you have to wait till you get your response. The other issue is some DNS servers are controlled by people whose interest is in keeping you from visiting certain websites. For whatever reason, they might accuse them of piracy. They may be a competing website. They may be all sorts of different things that, that kind of shady. Mainly these come from ISPs like Comcast DNS server or Charter's DNS server or all of those. Not really trusting. So there are there are services like OpenDNS, which is a server that lets anybody. Uh, it's it's made to be an open like open source, and Google's DNS server, which is renowned for being quite fast. Now, how do you set up your router to go to one of theirs instead of the default one from your ISP? Fairly simple. I'm going to show you a picture over here. This is a screenshot from uh, my own router. And yours will definitely look different unless you have um, an Asus router, but yours will look a bit different than this. Um, what you'll be looking for is it's normally under a tab um, that says uh, DHCP. Uh, and that would be under LAN or... Depending on the different router interface, you're going to have to poke around for a little bit. But once you do find it, you'll yeah. find... Failing any other thing else, you can just go tab to tab to tab until you see something that says DNS. Right. You'll find something here, like what looks like over here, that says DNS server. Now, I've got that as 8.8.8.8, which is Google's DNS server. So instead of using the default one that um, comes from Comcast for me, my computer looks to that DNS server first. And that's that, and that's as simple as you get to it. Simple as, you, when you put in the setting, you change it, you may have to restart your router. The router will tell you, oh, I've got to restart now. Okay. And it's as simple as that. And now you're using, or you, what is the, you'll have to look up OpenDNS. You'll have to Google that to find out what their, uh, their number is. But you yeah. can use that too if you feel more comfortable with it. Now, another way to do this, uh, sometimes you can just leave that DNS server in your router blank and you set it on your local computer. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's, if it's blank on your router, then it has to be set in your local computer. If it's not blank in your router, it may override your local computer. Yeah. And the way you do that one is you just click on the thing that looks like a network icon and say, through Windows, open network and sharing center. Change adapter settings. You go. You basically go into the network adapter, and they will probably prompt you saying, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And there's a tab in there that says DNS as well. And again, preferred DNS server with an alternate DNS server. Yeah. Again, eight point eight point eight point eight eight point eight point four point four. And it doesn't cost anything. So if you happen to have slow internet service for some reason and you want to try this out and see maybe if it would speed up your reaction time online give it a shot it doesn't cost you anything that may help you
You can always change it. The, the, the way to change it back is you just erase the, the thing from the DNS. It's back to, to whatever the default is from your internet service. So, yeah. And to, to, to repeat, you have to have it set either in the router or on your computer. If you don't have it set in either place, you're really not getting anywhere. Yeah. Um, our next one is, this is an issue I've had before. Um, this comes from Jared. He says, I've purchased two splitters for the purpose of trying to use a headset, which I might use more often, especially since they cancel noise better than the house I live, but neither have worked completely. The problem lies with the laptop I've been using for a year or so that I'm only having what I believe is the digital jack port for headphones rather than the one that's split between headphones and microphones, which is why I've used the last laptop. All right, what he's talking about here is, used to be on your laptop, you would have one little jack for a microphone and one for a headphone. Yep. And old headphones, they used to make them with two plugs, one for a microphone, one for a headset. But now we've started combining those, especially with headsets like this for, for cell phones. And that, that has migrated over to laptops as well. Those tend to be software controlled to tell the computer if it's a headphone plugged in or a mic plugged in. And I've noticed from my own use of my, uh, I've got a Dell laptop. I've noticed from my own use, it is a pain in an a in the ass to deal with these things. I fucking hate them. <laughs> and I can tell you before we get into the rest of your question, because you have a, a whole bunch going on here. Um, you're not dealing with that jack is just going to be a big old headache, especially if you're trying to use a splitter to get an older style headphone headset to work with a new laptop. I personally would just work around it. And my my res, my my recommendation for working around it is let me put it over on screen here so you can see it. Something like this. Um this is a USB sound card it's a tiny little usb sound card um it, it and it's this is one on amazon but there are tons more like it uh it's a usb audio adapter with 3.5 millimeter speaker and headphone jacks what this is is it's about the size of a usb stick you plug it into your laptop and it has the headphone and microphone jack on it you can plug your headset into there and lo and behold, it will work just like it used to. And it's only, these start at about $10 or so. So they're not super expensive devices. And they work pretty well. They work, they work fairly well. So it's, it's a simple, easy workaround is what it comes out to. I, I consider that to be much less of a headache than trying to get the built-in software in the laptop to do exactly what you want it to do because there are so many different iterations of them each laptop has a custom one from the manufacturer and trying to dig down and and fuck them fuck them just just <laughs> work around it route around the damage my friend route around the damage um, now, our next question, and I am so sorry that I cannot pronounce this because the name comes from someone, I believe, is that Russian? It looks Cyrillic, yes. It looks Cyrillic. Um, the email address says it's from Ronin or Ronin. I hope I'm saying that right because I could not read the Cyrillic. I'm very, very sorry. Okay. Google Translate says it's Logan Kane. That's the English version of the name. Whether that's the what he what he would say his English version of his name is, I don't know. Okay, well, Logan. All right. Um, sorry if we got it wrong. Sorry if we got it. We, we do, we're doing our best. We're doing our fucking best here. Logan says, "I recently upgraded to an ASUS uh, M5 A99 FX Pro motherboard, and I have two hard drives in the case." One is a Western Digital uh, with my current Windows operating system. The other is a 500 gigabyte drive with Windows 7 that was once inside a laptop. Okay. First time I booted up the computer, I had to rearrange the SATA cables because it automatically booted into Windows 7. That's not the problem. 
The problem is now I want to try to do a one-time boot, but every once in a while to that 2.5 drive, no matter what the drive in the BIOS I changed to choose to do the boot, override. Okay, I, what, what's coming down here is he wants to occasionally be able to boot into Windows 7 off the laptop hard drive, which that's already a bad idea, but if it worked, okay. But now it always boots to Windows 10. And he's tried changing the cable connections inside the motherboard and changing the name in the BIOS. That's not how that works. Um, okay. What happens with Windows is Windows does not always just look at the BIOS for where to boot from, especially if you have two operating systems, two hard drives with active operating systems connected to the same motherboard. What Windows looks for is its own boot manager and its BCD. So you can plug whatever you want in wherever, it doesn't matter. Windows will still go to its own little table it's created that says, well, what's the dominant operating system on this machine? Windows 10, that's what we're gonna boot into. You may have got it to work once, but after Windows 10 booted up, it would have looked through and saw a record of what booted, of what uh, operating systems were on this machine and gone, Wait a minute, that's not right. I'm Windows 10, I'm the dominant operating system. I'm going first, and I don't even know what you're on here for. Go away, I, Windows 7, I don't need you. So this has created a conflict, and Windows 10 is the dominant one. You can't fix this by unplugging or plugging in hard drives. Technically, you could just unplug the Windows 10 drive but that's not gonna help you if you want to keep them both connected and occasionally boot into the other. Now there are command line options for you to go through that would take a seriously long time for us to explain. I will recommend a much faster way to resolve this for you to make that, that will work. It's a program called Easy BCD. Um, now, don't be fooled. Trying to remember the name of that. Yeah. Don't be fooled. Right here, you'll see it says buy now. Don't be fooled by that. If you go down here, there is a free non commercial version of this you can use on your system. So you won't have to pay anything. Um, it's at neosmart.net slash easybcd. And what this is, is this is a, a, a GUI interface that runs that BCD command line stuff without you having to, to type in command line shit. And this will tell you what operating systems are installed on what hard drives. You can tell it which order you want them to boot into. You can give a menu when your screen pops up, giving you the option of which one to choose to boot into. It's so much easier than us trying to tell you how to C slash BCD edit slash, oh God, this is much easier for you. You can do it the hard way if you want, but do it like this. This is this much easier. It's it's one of those, um, and this will also, just in case you're curious, this will work with um, Linux as well. So if you want to do a dual boot Windows 10 and Linux setup, this will help you configure that. It's it's simple, it's easy, it, it makes things better make better. So if you want to do Windows 10 and Windows 7 on the same computer, if you want to do different installations of, Win of the same operating system of Windows, like one Windows 7, another Windows 7, this will let you do it. There you go. Easy, simple, no headache, everything good. Everything good. Got one last one, um, comes from uh, Carito Prime. And he says, I've been having some problems with File Explorer on Windows 10. Sometimes take a lot of time to load, fail to show a preview for a file or even show any kind of icon. The little green bar at the top will get stuck. Sometimes transferring files will be incredibly slow and sometimes it will work better when another program opens File Explorer. 
I dug around like crazy to find a solution for this. And uh, as with many Microsoft problems, I did not find a definitive one. Um, but I did find one, hopefully, that will maybe fix the problem. Because, again, it's a vague issue. It, it, yeah, I mean, I see this at work all the time with uh, external drives that are encrypted, which all of ours have to be. Uh, the encryption software we use is kind of dumb in that, oh, you've connected the external drive. Uh, I, can, I can decrypt this to file list, you know, to list things for you. Yeah. It has to go through and check to see, can I decrypt this file? Can I do the entire file structure before it will turn back anything from Windows Explorer? And the problem here is you're not getting an error code. It's just a performance issue. And it's a weird nebulous one, so it's hard to define. I get that. That happens with computers a lot. It's it's frustrating and it's 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 difficult to pin down. So um the best option I found was this system file check. Doing a system file check scan. And on this on it's built into um windows very simple go to start type cmd that will open a command line uh right click on it pick run as administrator um let's see then you run the uh, uh let's see it um and then you type um, SFC slash scan now. Like that. And that, that will do a scan and repair. If you just want to verify that everything's working right, you can type SFC slash verify only. It will just look for problems without fixing anything. That is is and you can look up more about this it is a, an article on on uh microsoft's knowledge base um just look for a uh, system file check scan and repair you can google for that you'll be able to find it it's it, it it may find issues it may not and there's more there's a whole lot more here other options for it as well that's the best answer i can come up to this because again it's one of those nebulous weird there's lots of different things that can be causing it yeah this this is the 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 best easiest answer for it because it's one of those intermittent strange problems on computers and i understand this frustrates a lot of people who just want to use their damn computer this is one of those intermittent ones that or ones that don't define itself very well. It's just something you know is wrong, but you can't, you know. You eh. can't point to, to consistent things that are causing it. Say, when I do this, it always happens. You know, it's when I do this, sometimes it happens. So it that if, if your file explorer in Windows 10 is being slow, if it's acting a little weird and laggy, a system file check may sort it. Uh, I'm sorry we don't have a better answer for you because yeah all uh, for as much as error codes suck and they are ne and they cannot give you a straight English translation of what they mean an error code is better than nothing because at least you have something to Google but anyway that's that's the best I hope I'm sorry I, that, that, that that's the best we got for you dude yeah if, uh, if there weren't like a thousand different causes for this, we could go, oh, yes, it's this, do this. Yeah, th there could be, there's just so many. Uh... It could, it could be, as you mentioned, you know, one of your hard drives is on the cheaper side. It could be, it just doesn't communicate nearly yeah. as effectively as the others do. And it's going, okay, I'm having a lot of um, read, read write errors. Uh, one other thing you can check, this just came to me. Um, if, if when this is happening, you launch the utility uh, Resmon, Resource Manager, Monitor, Resource Monitor. Uh, I want to say if you click on the disk activity section of that utility, it will tell you how many read-write errors you're having. 
So if you see a lot of read write errors, then you go, okay, that may be the cause. Yeah, running check disk as well. Um, that's chk dsk. Um, running check disk as well could also potentially find if this is a hardware issue. Um, look for bad sectors. Heck, Allison just had this problem. She's got a dying hard drive. We had to go check that out. So she's getting a replacement on that. Um, that a hard a physical problem with the drive itself. If the if the hardware in it is dying, could also cause this as well. So that's something to be aware of too. In which case, you should probably make a backup of your system just to be on the safe side. Okay, uh, I just looked at Resmon. It doesn't have a, a read write error but it does have IO priority and response times. So you can only see possibly what processes might be holding up your disk activity. You yeah. go, oh, this is happening when this other thing has launched. Maybe that's the issue. Uh, and as always, update your drivers. If you have drive, if you have anything on there that you, you think you can update the drivers on, give them a look, see if, you know, because it's always possible, uh, yes, Patch notes, shoddy drivers in version one cause crap disk activity. Yeah. They never actually say that, but you know, it's what they mean sometimes. Well, sorry we couldn't do better on that one. It's one of the, there's a lot of these, you kind of have to be there yourself to poke at it. This, this is the best we can do across the internet, but we are, we are giving you something. It's something. It's better than nothing. And it's free. So screw you. You're getting this for free. Shut up. Leave me alone. I don't know you. That's my purse. Um, that's my purse. I, that's my purse. I don't know you. King of the Hill. No, don't. No, I don't remember that one. I don't remember that one. Well, everyone, thank you once again. We're back here for this. We'll be back in two weeks. If you have any tech questions you want to uh, add, uh, send it to request at radiodeadair.com. Put tech Q&A in the subject line. And we will attempt to answer these for you. Uh, Mike, thank as always, thank you very much. Oh, sure. And we'll see you back here Monday for RDA. Good night, everybody.